fun science video for you. Have you ever heard the phrase, water is sticky? Some people have never heard that, but water is sticky. Have you ever wondered why water is sticky? If you don't know what I mean, maybe perhaps after a rainstorm, you, you've, heard, you've watched when a raindrop hits the ground. It doesn't, it doesn't just flatten out. It kind of makes this dome. Almost like that's why it's called a raindrop. But why does water dome up like that? Why does it stick to itself? By the way, we're not going to actually answer that in this question, but we're going to do a little activity in this video to see how sticky water is. But if you're in my class, you are going to have to figure out why water's sticky by reading pages 82 through 89. But for this activity, if you're at home and you're trying this and you're not in my class, you can just have fun with it. If you want to try to figure out why water's sticky, you can, but just try to do the activity I'm saying. So if you want to do the activity that I'm about to say, you're going to need some things. You're going to need a penny. You're going to need an eyedropper. You're going to need some water and you're probably going to want to have a paper towel so you don't make a mess on your parents' uh, table or counter or wherever you're doing this. So that's what you'll need. By the way, if you are in my class, you need to do the activity. So if you don't have one of the materials, you've got to figure out how to do the activity by putting drops on a penny. Uh, if you don't have an eyedropper, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to watch my video and you'll have to use my number. Right? But if you can find your own eyedropper, it's more fun to see if you can beat me with the number of drops you can put on a penny. So it's more fun that way. So uh, that's what you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and gather up some materials if you need to right now. So uh, you can pause the video and go gather some of those materials if you want. I'm back. All right. Hopefully you have some materials. By the way, if you don't have the materials, again, you can watch the video and you can find out how many drops we get on a penny by watching the video. So for those of you who went and just found your materials good, first thing I want you to do, and if you're at home and you're trying this too, I want you, first thing I want you to do is I want you to write a prediction down. I want you to write how many drops of water do you predict that we can actually put on a penny? So go ahead and pause the video and write your prediction down. How many drops can I get on a penny? Write it down. Now you're back after you pause the video hopefully you have your number down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually see how many drops we can put on a penny. And by the way, you can use either side you want, heads or tails, doesn't really matter to me. Pick the side that you think you can get more drops on. When I show you this, you're going to actually see two things. You're gonna see one penny that already has a bunch of water on it, okay? And I'm just showing you that so you get a chance to see that doming effect that I was talking about. You'll be able to see that on one of the pennies. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and put drops on a penny that you see as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do that. I have to change the angle of the camera here real quick. And I have to get it so that you will be able to actually see the pennies. So I gotta try to double check and make sure that you can actually see the pennies on the screen, which you can. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and see how many drops. Uh, you can already see on this one right here, you can kind of see what I was talking about with that doming effect, all right? But uh, we're going to go ahead and see how many drops we can get on this tail side right over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, whew, getting close, 27, 28, I'm going to stop for a second. Wow, that's amazing, 28 already. By the way, I love it when I put drops on the tail side. You can actually see Lincoln sitting inside the Lincoln Memorial. 28, that's what I got, 29, 30. Oh, so on 30, <laughs> on 30, <laughs> on 30 it went. So I got 29 drops. By the way, earlier 
on that other penny that was on the head side, I was only able to get 26 drops. So I actually was able to get one, three more drops on the tail side than I was able to get on the head side. Perhaps there's a reason for that too. Maybe you could look at that and try to figure that out. But anyway, what you need to do, all right, right now is, did you beat me if you did it on your own? If you beat me, great. Uh, that's awesome if you beat me. Uh, but uh, if you didn't beat me, uh, that's awesome too because you were able to at least run the chest. You know, a lot of people are surprised unless they've done this before. That's the fun part of the science video. A lot of people are surprised that they can get that many drops on a penny. That's the exciting part of this video. I know it's maybe not as exciting as some of my science videos, but that's a pretty amazing thing. All right, so one of the things you have to do if you are in my class right now is you need to realize that I'm gonna ask some students how many drops they got in class. And I'm also gonna ask some of the students who didn't have an eyedropper at home, I'm gonna ask them to tell me how many drops I got. By the way, it doesn't matter if you were able to do it or not, or you had to use mine, but you needed to see how many drops that it got. Uh, were any of you surprised? Did you get more drops? And did I get more drops than you thought you would, than what you predicted? Well, if, if that's the case, and you did get more than you predicted, that means you probably need to learn a little bit more about water. So what you're gonna do right now is you're gonna actually, if you were in my class, you're gonna read pages 82 through 89. And you're gonna do several things. One thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to try to come up with a better science word than water being sticky. Water sticking to itself has a name in the book. You're gonna to try to figure out what that name is. And you're gonna put that on the paper that I gave you, all right? I gave you that paper in a link on the Wednesday work. It's got three other questions besides the question I just asked, all right? So you're gonna figure out what's the better science word for water being sticky. You're also gonna to try to figure out why water is sticky. There's a reason given in the book. You wanna to try to write that reason down. The other three questions that you're gonna to try to answer, by the way, you can try to answer the questions before reading and see what you already pre-know. That's why it's called a formative assessment. But the other three questions you're gonna to try to make sure you have right answer to before our next class period is you're gonna to try to have at least three reasons why water is important. Perhaps you can come up with some of those before you read. But then you're gonna use the book and make sure you have at least three reasons why water is important. Second, you're gonna to try to list what three states uh, does water exist in, all right? Again, you might be able to answer some of that before you read. If so, great. If not, use the book, pages 82 through 89, to help you with that. And finally, besides the property we're talking about with water being sticky, you also have to come up with at least three other properties of water that are listed in the book, pages 82 through 89. If you were just watching this video for fun and you're not in my class, you don't have to do those questions, but perhaps you wanna figure out why water is sticky. You could try that on just using a search engine and go and type, why is water sticky? Why does water stick to itself? And maybe you could figure out the science word for it as well. So anyway, uh, this video was mostly made, though, for the students in my class who might not have an eyedropper at their home, all right, who can't actually run the test. I wanted them to be able to see a result in case they couldn't do it. If we were not in remote learning right now, I would have given them a penny in class and, a, and an eyedropper, and they would have calculated it on their own. But for those of them who don't have an eyedropper at home, they at least were able to participate in our activity. I hope you're having a great day and uh, have a good one. Bye now.